What is good, everyone? What is good? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're jumping back into the Go Battle League arena, this time returning once again to the Great League Remix to finally unleash the beast Pokemon that everyone is fretting about, Carbink. The pay-to-win Pokemon, is it worth it? Is it the monster that people say it is, that people are making it out to be? We are here to find out today as these battles are my first set trying out carbink i have very nearly finished powering it up but i was just too hyped too excited to wait i had to try it out now carbink is going to win a majority if not all of its neutral matchups and obviously it's going to hard counter a lot of the flyers a lot of the bug pokemon that you'll be seeing so something like a Galvantula will not be appreciating Carbink. Something like even like a Buzzwool will be easily losing to Carbink in the zeros. Matchups do change in the ones and twos. And we are talking about Rock Throw here today as our fast move, which might change in the future. But we're going to be featuring a couple different teams today. First one, Crest, Licky, Carbink. But we finished off and had more success with Crest, Double, and Carbink. These are both ABB lines which are designed to draw out potential hard counters to Carbink by drawing out counters with a double and also drawing out potential Mudboys. Mudboys don't want to be aligned against Cresselia. So we're talking about Quagsire, we're talking about potential Whizcash. If the opponent has a Mudboy, they see Cresselia on the lead, they might be more apt or likely to bring them out on the safe swap when we bring out our double. And even though this is a carving showcase, I have to say, Double is an absolute monster. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop straight into some battles and see what carving can do in the Great League Remix. Jumping into the first battle, we're going to be featuring this team for only the first battle, Crest, Licky, and Carving. And we actually found that, or I felt like something was a little bit off running Licky here. So we did end up swapping to double, gave us better coverage over the flyers and just more flexible play all around. As you will find if you have a double right now and which will, you will learn in the future after this weekend's double days. Not even sure what the event is called, they're double days. As we do have the Vigoroth on the lead, this is tough for me, right? In an ABB line, you do wanna be swapping out to draw out the opponent's hardest counters to your back Pokemon to allow Carbink to sweep. We do see Vigoroth on the lead and we're able to KO that Vigoroth, but that was an instance where Licky just didn't fit right as we do see two normal Pokemon on the opponent's team, meaning Lickitung doesn't have a lot of play here. We safe swap into our Lickitung, hoping to draw out the opponent's fighter or pseudo fighter, maybe their mud boy, but instead the opponent going to stay in, fire off a of Brave Bird into our Lickitung, put us in the critical health range before pivoting out into a carbink of their own. I go for the body slam, not thinking I would be able to get to the power whip as our Lickitung does get rock thrown down. We bring back our Cresselia. We're hoping to grab a shield here or do some meaningful chip damage with this Grass Knot. And Grass Knot, there you see, it is a super effective, albeit non-stab move. And it does less than 30% to the opponent's carbink as carbink is an absolute monster it is so bulky and here we have the rock throw off it almost looks like they're playing like a hot potato type game as i will be shielding the opponent's rock slide here they pivot back into their pidgeot we throw in horrible timing it's been a hot minute since i've seen gust i'm thinking how many turns is this move is it three four five i have no idea as the opponent will be reaching a charge move here it will be resisted but i in my head i'm thinking Brave Bird may be the hardest hitting charge move left in the game. So I'm going to shield it up, go for the rock side, be able to farm down thanks to the double debuff. And now the opponent will be bringing back in a carving of their own. We are going to easily be able to outpace the opponent. And even though we are double debuffed, this rock side will easily be enough to KO and one rock throw will be enough to take down the opponent's Vigoroth as carving full sweeps and calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. So there you see Lickitung on the safe swap. We're going to be swapping to double my favorite Pokemon in the Go Battle League. I can now safely say, and I love running Wild Charge on the GOAT as well, 
as we are going to have the drift limb on the lead we're going to immediately pivot out into our double we build up energy we were building up to the potential payback to threaten the opponent they icy wind and dip like a lot of the debuffers will before pivoting into their quagsire this is perfect for us we're able to draw out a hard counter to our carbink in the back with the double double it doesn't really matter what we do here even though we do have a ton of energy double has done its job it's drawn out the opponent's hardest counter and i do apologize for the animations i did take these battles from my live stream as we do see the gifties coming through double now at its fourth body slam so double is just charging energy like a madman the goat coming through able to throw off all of these body slams into the opponent we grab a shield from the opponent's quagsire and we're going to expend one shield here we're going to match because we do want to win switch advantage here this is going to seal the deal for us doesn't really matter what they have in the back at this point as we are debuffed in our attack we're still going to be able to grab the opponent's final shield we're going for one final wild charge not able to get it but having one switch we can now realign our pokemon we don't want crest aligned to this drift limb instead we win switch with the goat we're able to get carbink aligned against the drift limb and it doesn't really matter how many times they debuff us as you do see the shadow ball coming through the opponent has all shields down we're easily going to be able to take them out with a rock slide as we are now double debuffed in our attack opponent goes for the catch onto the quagsire not able to get it although it was close i was anticipating it they bring back in their drift limb let's see how much this double debuffed rock slide is going to do to the flyer it very nearly ko's one final Rock Throw will do it for us as we pivot back into our Cresselia and we see the opponent's final Pokemon. It will be the Lickitung. This is a little bit tough for us, right? Lickitung is dealing super effective Lick damage on the Cresselia, and these Licks will start to add up as we're going to be fishing for the debuff by throwing Moonblast after Moonblast. Opponent able to reach a Body Slam, and this is just a battle of two extremely bulky Pokemon. Cresselia very closely loses this battle to the Lickitung in the zeros, but we will be able to hopefully get it low enough to be able to rock throw it down. This is going to be extremely close. No, we're not able to rock throw it down as the opponent is at another charge move. This body slam will be resisted by our rock type carbink. And I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, if we are fully powered up, we may have caught the dub there. But like this, the opponent able to lick us down. Pause. Well played by them. Thank you for the match. Hopping into the next battle, we have Cresselia on the lead against the opponent's Galvantula. We're going to swap out immediately, take the debuffing lunge onto our double, build up a massive amount of energy. We are now at the back-to-back -back wild charges. This will be threatening the health and shields of the opponent as you see how much damage one wild charge, even though debuffed from the GOAT, is going to do to the opponent's Dugong. We are now quadruple debuffed in our defenses, allowing the opponent to ice shard us down before bringing back in our Cresselia. This dugong has built up a massive amount of energy, but Cresselia is our tank, and this is a carbink showcase, meaning we're going to be saving our shields for our rock fairy in the back as we're building up energy here we want to build up over farm a little bit but throw before the opponent reaches a third charge move as we will be able to be double debuffed in our attack but still ko the opponent's dugong we're now up one shield meaning we have two shields to the opponent's one they pivot out into their jellicent this is a tricky matchup for us i didn't run the simulations on all of these matchups but i'm looking Jellicent able to deal super effective surf damage onto our rock type Pokemon. We're going to be dealing neutral type damage with our rock type moves. But there you see the rock throws and the rock slides have already added up. Jellicent is extremely low surf. We're able to take that one on the chin. We do have to shield this one up, but we are getting the opponent extremely low. Thankfully, we were up two shields to one. We're going to be able to outpace the opponent to this next move putting pressure on their health and shields we do put the opponent in critical health range grab their final shield pivot out catch the surf onto our cresselia will we be able to farm down no we are not as the opponent brings in their galvantula we 
will be throwing this Moonblast just before the opponent gets their charge move. Will they go for the farm down? We get the debuff on the attack. That debuff, the skilled debuff, allowed us to win as Cresselia survives on a single HP thanks to that Moonblast. 10% debuff. Carbink calls game. Rock throws the opponent's jellyfish down. Well played by them. Very unlucky, but skilled by me. Just kidding. 10% debuff. Thank you for the match. As we hop into the next one, we have a tough lead. Cresselia on the lead against Golbat. We pivot immediately out into our double, and we draw out the opponent's fighting type Pokemon. It will be the Shadow Machamp. Machamp going for the full counter down onto the goat but double did have an energy lead meaning we're going to get to another body slam opponent does not want to go two shields down we've now successfully got the machamp very low into easy farm down range for our Cresselia. we can take this rock slide on the chin we're not worried about a potential payback here there you see rock slide does respectable damage they're not going to be able to get to another move though as they will be bringing back in their goal bat we're going to build up to the potential future site before pivoting out into our carving we're not worried about anything the opponent's going to be throwing at us and they will full send the shadow ball it doesn't do as much damage as you might think as the opponent will be pivoting out into their dragon water type kingdra Kingdra is a shadow, meaning it will not be appreciating anything that we have for it. You see the rock throws have already chunked the opponent to under 50% health as they throw their Octazooka. They do get the unfortunate double debuff on our attack. So our attack is cut by two stages as we will be shielding up this next Octazooka as well. Going for the full farm down on the opponent. Are we going to be able to get it? I get a little bit nervous, a little bit sweaty. Pivot back out into our Cresselia. We are now at 100 energy. We'll be throwing this Moonblast into the opponent. And this is looking really good for us as they will not be able to farm us down. Have to throw their energy. They realize it. Unable to do so as we will be KOing the opponent's goal bat with back-to-back -back Moonblast as Cresselia calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. Hopping into the next battle, we have a bit of a tricky lead for us as Cresselia is able to closely win this battle but we do have to call out the potential shadow balls from the opponent one bait can easily flip this matchup we grab the opponent's first shield before pivoting out into our double double has a massive energy advantage on the opponent's fighting type pokemon this time it will be the surfetched we grab a shield from the surfetched build up to the wild charge will this wild charge be grabbing the opponent's second shield wild charge bang ko's the opponent's fighting duck they are now fully shields down double able to put in a massive amount of work there we can allow the goat to go down as it has successfully flipped switch done its job drawn out the opponent's counter user clearing up the path for our carbink end game and also successfully flipped switch opponent going to be firing off the shadow ball here as opposed to the surf we are staying in with our carbink we want to see how much damage is this super effective rock slide going to do to the opponent's dugong and it does do a massive amount of damage very nearly 40 percent as we will be staying in here allowing our carbink to get debuffed before pivoting into our cresselia to take care of some business here end game we're going to allow our Cresselia to get debuffed as well because we do want to make sure that we can outpace the opponents. Jealousy on the back end. We have over farmed a massive amount. Now, over the back to back, Grass Knot, Grass Knot number one KOs the opponent's Dugong. Grass Knot number two going to be dealing super effective damage onto the opponent's Jellyfish. And it does do massive damage, even though it is from a debuffed Cresselia as we can now allow Cresselia to go down as Shadow Ball bang takes it out. We're saving our shield for Carbink as this is easily going to be our win condition. We can tank whatever the opponent throws here, but we're going to play it safe. Shield up this Shadow Ball as the opponent should be throwing Surf's here. Surf does do super effective damage and it is also a stab move and just better overall DPE from the opponent as Carbink calls game with a final Rock Slide KOing the opponent's Jellyfish. Thank you for the match, and thank you to all of my opponents today for all of the fun matches, allowing me to test drive Carbink in the Great League Remix. Navigating my way through that first set, it was a bit tricky as a lot of teams are either 
directly and intentionally countering Carbink or indirectly and inadvertently or unintentionally countering Carbink. There are a lot of mud boys out there. There are now, now, now a lot of counter users out there, which counter is going to be dealing neutral damage given the rock, but fairy typing of Carbink. And there's also starting to gain some traction in some grass users, even if it's non-stab. So Surfetched with Leaf Blade, Cresselia with Grass Knot. So just some things to be mindful about when you are battling with Carbink and when you're team building and theory crafting with Carbink as well. It is a very strong Pokemon as we demonstrated today, but it is important to build a team around it like we did today that A, covers some of its weaknesses. So Cresselia able to cover some of Carbink's weaknesses from fighting given its psychic typing, as well as the Mud Boys given Cresselia running Grass Knot. And you also want to try and draw out Carbink's hardest counters. So something like the double today, we also tried out Licky, was pretty effective in drawing out the opponent's answers to Carbink. If an opponent has two answers to Carbink, try and work your way through it. It is tough, but more times than not, they will only have the one, which will hopefully allow Carbink to sweep end game. But if you made it this far in the video, please drop me a comment. Let me know, have you used Carbink yet? Have you been seeing a lot of Carbink? Are there any teams that you would recommend or that you want to see featuring this pay to win exclusive Pokemon? And I will do everything in my power to make that happen for you. But that's going to be all from me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Remember to enjoy the small things. Peace.